Hey, today we have an exciting project to dive into. I am going to replace this TMS 991A ANL in my NABU with an F18A. No, not that kind of F18A, but an FPGA designed to add 80 column mode to a NABU personal computer. Matthew Haggerty is the purveyor of this site. This site gives us some information about the F18A, and there are two versions. There's the original FA18, and there is the Mark II. Today, I'll be installing the original, although there are advantages to the Mark II to include an HDMI out as opposed to VGA and a smaller form factor, which would come in handy as you're gonna find out during my install of the original. The F18A is a direct pin compatible replacement for the TMS 9918A VDP family that was used in many retro computers and game consoles from the early to mid 1980s. The F18's primary goal is to provide a pixel-perfect output video signal that can be used directly with a modern computer display. Now, in our case, we'll be using it with the NABU computer, which also, like a TI-994A and like many MSX computers, uses that same video display chip. And for the NABU, I'm particularly interested in 80 column mode, although this FPGA does offer some additional graphics modes. We won't cover those today in our demonstration. So why 80 column mode? Because CPM or Cloud CPM is available for the NABU and there are two versions. There's a 40 column mode and now there is an 80 column mode that supports the F18A. And if you're used to working with operating systems such as CPM or MS-DOS, you know that going from 40 to 80 columns can give you a little more breathing room when you're working with text-based software. And as I mentioned, there is a 40 column CPM mode, but in order to use it in 80 column mode, well, sort of in 80 column mode, you have to hit the page right and page left keys on the NABU keyboard. And that makes it a little odd kind of scrolling left and right and back and forth and trying to see things on either side of the screen when you're using it in that fashion. Now let's talk about the F18A. Back in 2023, and I believe it was March, Hans Hugner reached out to ask if I was still interested in an F18A after I had filled out an interest form, I think it was way back in 2022. As I said earlier, the F18A does work in other computers such as the TI-994A, which yeah, I have one right there, but I will not be covering that in this video. If that's something you think we should cover, make sure you leave a comment down below. Okay, before we get started, you will need some tools. First of all, you need a static-free area. Some of you will want to use a static-free wrist guard. That's fine. I do not use one. Comments down below, and you can tell me why I should be. I'm happy to read those. You'll also need a flathead screwdriver. Now, I use the flathead screwdriver to slowly pry out the old chip from the socket. You may want to use a chip puller. You're also going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, and I might recommend that you get the Life Goo Precision Screwdriver Set. Little note here, my executive producers all got one of these for free for their Christmas gift last year. So the first thing I did was, I was feeling pretty positive about this project, so I went ahead and installed the back plate that comes with the F18A, which was a really nice addition. You could perform the step either at the beginning or the end, but again, class half full kind of guy here. So this is an easy one. First thing you want to do is remove this plate from the back of the NABU. There are several of them. Just pick a location. Here's where I chose to insert my back plate. You want to replace this original plate with the 3D printed PLA back plate provided. And then you want to use the existing screws from the NABU and they're going to bite nicely into that PLA. Now that I have the back plate on, let's go ahead and remove the TMS 9918 ANL video display chip. Now this chip is located toward the back left of center of the main board. Now you can use the chip puller or do as I did and use a very small flathead screwdriver to slowly and gently pry the chip out of its socket, but be very careful if you use this method. Now that we have the chip out, we can install the F18A. Now as I placed the F18A, I noticed that there was some interference from these two connector pins. To make room for the F18A, I bent these back about 15 degrees towards the back of the case, and I also relocated the header found on this pin. Once I had those moved, I could easily install the F18A into the socket. 
Now, once I felt that the F18A was in place properly, then it was time to connect the cable. Luckily, my cable came with an orientation warning written right on the cable to let me know which way was up. Once I had the connector connected to the Naboo, then I could take the VGA port on the other end of the cable and take it to the back plate to install. Simply remove the screws from the VGA connector, insert it into the back plate, and use those same screws to tighten the VGA port onto the back plate. And that didn't look half bad. I'm not sure I would have chosen purple as my color. I might go back and reprint a black or silver version of this back plate at some point. Now, basically we have everything done. I'm not gonna put the top back on the Nabu yet because I wanna test it out. So I'm going to plug the VGA port into my handy dandy Wimaxit VGA monitor. And I love this little monitor. If you want more information about this monitor, check out the video description below. And I have a YouTube short if you'd like to learn more about it. Once everything is connected and the Wimaxit monitor is turned on, we can now test the F18A on the Naboo. But before we do, I have someone to thank, and that is the sponsor for this video, Vivor. Vivor was kind enough to send me a 15U open frame server rack for review and deployment in my studio, and I found it to be the perfect complement to my Naboo computer. You think we can get this thing put together? All right, well, we'll give it a shot, Retro Pop. Hey, Retro Pop, we're almost done. Now you might think the Vivor 15U open frame server rack is only for servers, but if you have a retro collection, these racks can help you organize your collection and keep things safe and secure with its durable steel construction. My poor Naboo had just been sitting around on this white Ikea table. Now with the F18A upgrade, I can place the Naboo on this rack and move it around my room with ease, making my Naboo convenient when I want to create a video or play games. The extra storage underneath provides space for accessories and fits the keyboard perfectly. I even have an additional shelf if I want to place a trusty TI-994A or the Raspberry Pi I have connected to the Naboo so that I can remotely connect to the internet adapter from another computer in the home. And if you want a Vivor 15U open frame rack for your retro or modern computers and servers, check out the link in the video description below. Thanks to Vivor for sponsoring this video. Now let's test that F18A on the Naboo. It's time to fire it up. First thing we want to do is just take a test to see if we get the Naboo welcome screen. We do. Check. Now let's connect it to the Naboo network to see if that's working properly. Now that's in 40 column mode, the original graphic display, check. So the F18A is emulating the functions of the original TMS chip. Now let's check it with 40 column CPM, does it work? Check, all right, let's check it with the Naboo network, does it work? Check. Hey, let's check and see if it will run an MSX ROM. Hey, let's try Galaga and see if it works. Check. So now we have all of the functions that we had before with the original TMS chip, but with an advantage, we have a much cleaner output using the VGA port. And here's a demonstration of the before and after display resolution. Previously, I was just capturing the video out using an RCA jack. Now with VGA, it's a much crisper display and the colors seem sharper. Now I'm fortunate because I do use a Cloner Alliance Box Pro that includes both the composite in or RCA and a VGA in. Here's an example of the video captured with the composite or RCA, and here's an example of the video captured using VGA. 
and you can see there's a marked improvement. And that's an advantage we get with the F18A is the enhanced video. Now, let's check what I really wanted this for, which is 80 column mode. And in order to do that, we need to fire up cloud CPM 80 column mode for the F18A. Oh, check that out. Look at that, 80 column mode, check. As far as I can tell right now, this thing is doing everything I wanted it to do. Plus, it gave me sharper video quality and I have 80 column mode for CPM. Let's check out WordStar, see what that looks like in 80 column mode versus 40 column. Yeah, as you can see, that is much better. It's a much better experience. And if I wanted to write my next blog post using WordStar on the Nabu, I could now do that. You know, that's an idea. Hmm. All right, since everything works, I decided to go ahead and put the cover back on the Nabu and put it back on the Vivor rack and we are good to go. Now I know there's more that I can probably do with the FPGA on the Nabu. And if you know of something I'm missing, leave a comment down below. I know there are several Nabooers out there who could tell me, hey, Retrocombs, you're forgetting. You can also do this. And I'd love to know what that is. Overall, I'm very impressed and pleased with the F-18A, it has done everything I wanted for my NABU. It does everything it promised it would do, and it was a great purchase. And it is a recommended upgrade for anybody with a NABU. Go out there and get you an F-18A. Now, if you can find that Mark II, that smaller form factor, remember, you're not gonna have the installation issues that I had with the interference from those two pins, and you're gonna get HDMI out. That may be something that you need. All right, that concludes my F-18A 80 column video display NABU computer installation. That's a lot of words right there. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you did, hey, do that thing down there. Give me a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment. And you know what would be really great is if you share this video with another NABU or somebody who has interest in the NABU computer. And don't forget once again to check out that Mavor 15U open frame rack server for 99 bucks. It truly is, as you can see in these images, the perfect storage for the NABU or any other vintage computer. Hey, if you have questions about the F18A, put those in the comments down below. And hey, stick around. I will link to another NABU video that you'll enjoy along with another video that you might find interesting. At this time, Retrocombs out.